five is on the road here at Marvell Technology Corporate Headquarters in Silicon Valley, and we are discussing surprise AI. Uh, on the show and in our analyst research, we've discussed a lot about the elements of what makes AI successful in the data center. There seems to be a lot of focus on the GPUs, which are super important, as are the memory and also the storage. But some com a component, networking, doesn't get enough discussion, even though it's one of the biggest bottlenecks in AI training today, and even an in inference when you're looking at uh, from a latency uh, latency standpoint. But the good news is, is we have both Nick and Ashut from Marvell to discuss not only scale up, but scale out approaches to improving performance, uh, lowering uh, power, and also improving uh, on latency. So guys, welcome to the show. Thanks very much for having us. Thanks for having us, Greg. Definitely. Um, so a lot of the, a lot of the ways people love to talk about the network. You know, we can talk about uh, the front end network, the back end network. We can talk fabric, uh, but there's a lot of discussion about the difference between scale up and scale out. So Nick, I'd like to start with you. Talk about what you mean when you talk about a scale up network. Yes. So to put it plainly, scale up is about adding additional capacity while making it appear as a single computer to the software. You can add more memory, you can add more compute, but the key point is that all of those resources are available to a single software application running. It's fundamentally like a supercomputer application. Do we call it a node um, or a cluster? It's is a cluster. Yeah. It's a cluster, but the key difference is, is that that cluster is very tightly coupled that allows you to provide all of that resources simultaneously to one yeah. software application. Okay, and what are some of the key technologies uh, that you have that are driving uh, scale-up networking, improving it? Yeah, so when we look at scale-up networking, the key is the processor element itself, the fabric that interconnects those processing elements, and then the interconnect that goes between the processing elements and the fabric. And we see in the industry an evolution across all of those components. We've talked a lot about custom compute, but you very quickly move out of that compute to look at the entire solution. And that means looking at the interconnect fabric. And then you talk about different architectures for the fabric. And you quickly see that the fabric is very tightly coupled to the architecture of the computing. So there's an opportunity to do custom implementations for customers as they look at a differentiated way of building up higher performance scale up. Yeah, I'm, I'm real glad you brought up custom. Um, yes. It seems to be, I mean, uh, tech is like an accordion. Right, we we it compresses and it gets custom and that comes you know comes apart. But it, at times where you're trying to get uh, absolute highest performance uh, at the lowest latency and the lowest power, a custom has always been uh, the way to go. I'm glad you brought that up. So, Ashut, thank you for being patient here. Sure. Uh, let's talk about scale out. How does it differ from scale? up and what are the technologies that you're bringing to the table to, to improve this space? Yeah, no, thanks Pat. You know, when you look at these large language models that we have today, whether it's from a training perspective or an inference perspective, you know, you need thousands, tens of thousands, even growing number of XPUs, GPUs connected yes. together in a super cluster. And when you have a large language model, you break it out into multiple tasks, which different clusters doing different part of the task. Right. So while scale up is, you know, tens or a few hundred GPUs or XPUs together, scale out is the network that allows you to connect all of these scale up okay. clusters or these AI servers together. So now you have a super cluster of 10,000, 100,000, you know, at some point a million XPUs or GPUs together. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, I remember when it was cool to have 5,000 clusters and then 10 yes. and then 50. 100, and I was at a conference uh, last week where they were talking about 200,000 XPU the cluster, clusters yeah. uh, connected, and, and then you even have clusters connected between data centers, and a lot of action going on in China right now, but a lot of discussion here of how we do this uh, in the United States. So, uh, Nick, uh, it's actually going to be for both of you. What are some of the trends that are driving uh, towards scale up and scale out, and how are those shaping uh, the standards out there for AI uh, infrastructure? Yes, so probably the most significant trend is moving to larger and larger scale-up clusters. Today we see uh, predominantly the scale-up domain is either in a tray, where you might be talking about four, maybe eight XPUs, and that's the domain of your scale-up, or in a rack, where you're talking about less than 100. 
really limited to the physical constraints. So if you want to go bigger than that, you're talking about expanding beyond any one given rack to a row of systems. And then the interconnect becomes a really critical factor because copper traces or copper cables, which uh, predominates on the board or in the rack, doesn't have the reach to go to a complete row. And then you look at what's the right next step as you move from copper, which is low power and low latency, to, uh, to, to optics. Makes sense. I got to ask you a shoot a question on scale out, trends that are driving it. Yeah, I mean, if you look at scale out and just the size of the scale out network that we want to build, uh, you, you very quickly realize that the amount of power you can bring to any one data center building in any one location is limited, right? So if you want to get to multiple hundreds of thousands of XPUs in a cluster, one of the trends we see is these distributed data center networks where yes. you have these clusters spread across multiple data centers across regions. Sometimes they're on a given campus 10 to 20 kilometers apart. Sometimes these things could be a few hundred or a thousand kilometers apart. And now you need to connect all of these distributed data centers with very, very high bandwidth interconnect with its own switching fabric right. to make sure that it looks like one seamless cluster when you run a large language model. Right. The other thing that you see within the data center is the bandwidth capacities of these XPUs growing very, very quickly. You know, they double or triple every year. So the, sp the network speeds that you need to interconnect all of these XPUs in the scale out needs to double every year or every two years also. So not only do you see you know, speeds interconnecting these XPUs double within the data center, yeah. you also now see these clusters spread across multiple data centers connected by high bandwidth you know, interconnects across you know, tens or hundreds of kilometers. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I've been around for a long time. I think I'm in my 35th year of working in tech. And you always hear stuff like, oh, this is going to replace this. It's going away, you know, uh, uh, flat, uh, no more hard drives. But guess what? Most storage is still on hard drives, even in the hyperscalers today. Um, and, you know, that goes for copper, right? Yes. Copper is going away. And it's going to be replaced by optical interconnects. I got to tell you, though, if I look at why people are making decisions, how they're making decisions in the hyperscaler data centers, it seems like that optical could be this universal uh, universal interconnect. Am I making things up here or am I onto something? You know, I started working in this field 25 years ago at <laughs> you know, 100 megabits and one gig and people said that was the last generation of copper. So, right. you know, I said the, the death of copper has been greatly exaggerated. Now, what you do see in the AI is, yes, there is a use for copper. Yeah that the rates that these speeds are going up, you do see at some point of time that the distance that copper can traverse shortens and shortens as you double the speed. Sure. So there will be a point of time where at, you know people will keep using copper as long as they can. It is lower power, it is yeah. a little more resilient, but once you build these large clusters, both in scale up and scale out networks, you do see that copper simply cannot traverse the physical distance required for these large clusters. So at that point of time, whether that's three, five, seven years from now, right. at some point copper runs out of steam and it gets all optical. But you do see copper technologies keep pushing the transition. You had you know, DAC cables, you went to accelerated ACC cables, you now have DSPs inside copper to expand the reach. So I think copper will be around for a bit, but at some point of time it is going to go all optical. The question is when is that time frame, whether it's in the next five or seven years, or is it you know in the next decade? So Nick, uh, in scale up, is this easy? For you, easier for you because it's got you've got shorter throw and shorter distances, or uh, is the bandwidth and latency requirements even higher? So you have to go optical as well. Where, where do you sit on this? Yeah, you make a great point there because you're, we're really talking about two kind of dueling constraints. One is the need for ever and ever a higher bandwidth, and when you're talking inside scale up, you're inside the server chipset where very, very high speed is critical because it drives your performance of your compute directly. But on the other hand, as you go to longer distances, um, as you move into the optical domain, um, you're adding latency to the yeah. transactions happening across the scale up. So there's, there's really this, this uh, dual trade-off of high bandwidth and low latency that you have to balance. And as a result, I think we're gonna continue to see an evolution of the architecture, and it's gonna come down to what's the problem the customer is trying to solve. For instance, 
if you're working on an AI problem um, with, a, with a contained data set, maybe you're doing inference that's been optimized for a single application, your scale up might be a single rack or less. Yeah. And in that case, you might stay copper a little bit longer. On the other hand, you might be doing a very large training workload where you want the scale up to be as large as possible. There, you're gonna be motivated to move to optics and really to enable that very large scale and you're willing to make the investment in architect for the, for the additional latency um, of that solution. Yeah, I love that you make it conditional and not just kind of a binary, binary uh, question here. I also was struck in some of your slides on um, even the different uh, topologies of, of like campus versus mm -hmm. uh, one um, one building versus you know maybe going kilometers between uh, it, and I think it's you know up there with different strokes for different folks, which That's is good that we have this covered. So. Uh, I want to go a little bit peek into the future here, right? We we talked a lot about kind of where we came from, mm -hmm. where we are today, a little bit about the future here, but the reality is is that grounds up uh, data centers, they almost start with a clean slate, okay? And what can I do? What do I need to do? Uh, three years when I get this thing online, maybe two, but then how can I have you know four or five years of longevity mm -hmm. in it? Nick, I want to start with you. How are these technologies transforming data center architectures for what people are need to be thinking about in the future? Yes, absolutely. So it's, um, it's interesting because when you build on this concept that not all AI is created equal, right? You have drastically different compute problems that are being solved, um, whether you're talking about large training or inference, whether you're talking about a single application, or you're talking about a multi-tenant AI situation where you're providing AI services to others. Um, as you look to the future, you can see a continued evolution and a continued optimization of each one of those different use cases. Yeah. So at the same time, hyperscalers are gonna be looking at the available technologies and applying those to problems in very unique ways. Yeah. So we see a future of multiple different architectures, different innovations that are specifically suited to the problems those hyperscalers are solving. Um, and it's really exciting because from a Marvell standpoint, the focus is on building up the portfolio of technologies to enable all of those future scenarios. Well, it seems like with the advent of custom, the potential scenarios are almost endless. Is that, am I, again, am I making stuff up again or is that is that where this is headed? Yeah, and I think it, it gives that opportunity. And yeah. um, so we, we have a broad standard product line that customers can choose from in building these solutions. But if they want to go to, um, to the extra step to do something based on things that don't exist in the market today, yeah. we give the customers that option. So they can say, yeah. you know what, I, I can't find what I'm looking for, but I want it quickly. Yeah. Well, we're here to, to provide that through our custom offering. To shoot from a, a scale out perspective, mm -hmm. how are these new technologies kind of re, how do people need to relook at the future um, architecture of the data center? Yeah, I mean, if, if you look back, you know, when people used to build the data centers a few years ago, you would look and see what are the standard off the shelf components you have. Standard rack size, standard, standard, standard rack power size, size per exactly. rack. You know, yeah. even, the, op the modules, optical that you use, the switches that you use, are all standardized off the shelf. You put it together and you get sort of the best performance you get out of it. Yeah. And that was very similar, you know, you could you take a bunch of standard components, the results you're gonna get are gonna be very similar. Now with each of our customers wanting to optimize their networks so that they can get a leg up on their competition, each of them have their own secret sauce. They have their own right. optimizations, customizations, if you will, if you need to build. And so they use our products, they help, we help them customize their products, their networks in specific ways. So based on the kind of workloads they want to run, based on their business models, based on what their investment models are for CapEx or OpEx, each of them picks a slightly different architecture, a slightly different optimization point. And we are here to provide them all of this, the, the family of products that help them customize and optimize their networks in any fashion that they see. I mean, you know, you're know, you going to get to these million uh, XPU scale outs. You're going to get the distributed data centers. The speeds are going to grow up from you know 50 gigabits or 100 gigabits per lane to 400 gigabits right. across primarily optical networks, and each customer is going to optimize that network in their own way, and we provide them the family of technologies to help enable that. Yeah, this is exciting. I could talk about this uh, stuff forever. It's super exciting because uh, the the pace of change it is so quick, and the numbers that we're throwing around in terms of gigawatts, uh, you know low precision tops and all of the data that has to go through there is is just, 
10 years ago, I don't think we ever could have made this stuff up. But I'm glad we have people like you uh, creating these technologies uh, with your team. And I guess as up as analyst is to uh, monitor and track and, and guide the industry as best we can. But I really appreciate you coming on the show and I hope uh, we can do this again. Absolutely, thanks. Great talking Thank to you. Thank you guys. Great. Thanks for your time, good to be here. So this is a six five on the road at Marvell Technology headquarters. We are talking about our favorite topic over the last two years, and that is AI and data center AI. And hopefully, uh, you better understand where the scale up and scale out networks are, uh, where they can go short term, but also into the long term as it impacts data center architectures. Check out all of our interviews uh, with Marvell Technology uh, executives and subject matter experts. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Take care.